The best operation for XP has come back to World of Tanks, or at least will come back tomorrow as part of the new update in World of Tanks. And of course, today's video is going to cover this operation alongside some sales that Wargaming are running as part two, and obviously a brand new event that Wargaming are going to be running from tomorrow as well, which you can take advantage of and get some pretty decent rewards. But let's get into the update news, of course, the operation that I'm talking about and how you can take advantage of that to skip through tons and tons of XP throughout both Cold War and World War II. Whichever mode you play, it's going to be amazing. But we'll first start with what happened last week so you guys get an indication as to what Wargaming have been doing uh, in the recent. But the first thing that they've been doing is, of course, last week was that they in introduced a new key card. It's these Warlord key cards. You know, it's nothing too spectacular. Last week was pretty lackluster in terms of uh, big content reveals, etc. Uh, we've got penetrate three or more shots and you ended up getting one and a half times silver and you could get that five times per day. And if you're watching this on on release you can still use this for just today alongside a possibility of getting double XP twice per day if you place in the top five XP earners on your team. So yeah, it's just essentially some extra XP and then of course some bundles etc. But we also have some pretty interesting stuff uh, and by interesting I mean XP with interest and this is by far the best possible and I mean absolute pinnacle of being able to get ridiculous amounts of XP and you literally can get it straight away and yet it's assigned to every single game that you play and what do I mean by this? Well XP with interest is an operation that Wargaming have done in the past. Now, what you had to do was essentially uh, get 1000 XP and you get given 50% more XP in that game. Now, that takes into account if you've got two times XP from your daily first uh, of the game. If you win, you'll get more XP. If you've got premium time, you'll get even more XP. And what's even better is that it is repeatable within one game. So for example, if you manage to get 2000 XP within a game, you're able to get 2000 uh, XP, which is the result of two lots of that operation done, which means that instead of just getting 50% more XP, you'll get two lots of 50%, obviously doesn't take a genius to work out, but double XP. Now this may seem, oh, that sounds pretty good, you know, if you can consistently win games and stuff like that, but no. What's even better about this is all of those XP boosts that you've been saving up throughout the seasons, throughout challenges, Wargaming giving you XP boosts as well. If you use them during this operation, you can then boost up not only the XP that you're getting in your game, such that you'll get, you know, for example, if you're using a times 5 XP booster and you manage to have a 1000 base XP game, you're timesing that by five as well. On top of maybe having a daily double, you can end up with uh, six times XP. Uh, so you might end up with 6,000 XP. And then also, if you then factor in that, you know, you're getting, I don't know, some extra operation that might come out or maybe you're taking advantage of the fact uh, that, you know, you're using premium time, you will end up getting even more XP. And because you've got, uh, you know, 6000 XP, for example, in one game, just from one tank, you then have the additional six lots of 1000 XP in that game, meaning you get six lots of plus 50% XP. What does that mean? You end up with 350% more XP added on. So you can get even up to 10 times XP in just one game when you use this operation. If you're using the biggest XP boost that you have on your account, you just press Y or triangle if you're playing on PlayStation. Um, and essentially what you can do is just assign an XP boost. I would highly recommend this in every single tank that you are wanting to get XP on and really do nail this down because this operation doesn't come around all of the time and it is definitely the best operation you can use that will grant you just just tons of XP and save you so much time within the game to the point where I was able to, when it last arrived, grind through two entire tier 10 tech trees within a few days and maybe like 50 games or something ridiculous. 
and how I've been able to play tier 9 vehicles unlocking a tier 10 vehicle in just 20 or 30 games which is unheard of usually it takes you on average an average player probably 200 games it is unbelievably quick and this is the best way that you could possibly use this operation and i highly recommend you do use it it is better than string theory it is the best xp operation that you can use so really do use it and in addition to this, we've also uh, got the Recon in Force, so you essentially you can get extra silver in all of your games, and all you have to do is detect one or more vehicles uh, in a battle to earn 1.25 times silver, which means you're getting 25% extra silver, and you can do that three times per day. So it's essentially in every game that you detect a vehicle, three lots of that, 25% bonus silver which is brilliant and of course on track Italy uh, in honor of Italian Liberation Day which means that during this season or these next couple of weeks these two weeks you'll be able to get a discount on all of the Italian tanks alongside getting an additional 25% bonus XP and also 25% bonus silver um, which is nice and you're also going to be able to to get a reduction on each of the costs of all of these tanks within the Italian tech tree, meaning that you're saving, I believe it's 50% between tiers 3 and tier 6, and then 30% between tiers 7 and tiers 10, which is brilliant, and it's a great way to purchase up some of those tanks that you may not have already got, and when you combine it with the fact that you've got that XP with interest operation, that extra 25% XP that you get from using the on-track event in Italy, for example, if you're just playing Italian tanks, will just add on top of that 10 times XP value that you could get as a maximum making it even even more which is an and i'm going to showcase probably how you can use this operation once again during this week and how you'll be able to use it to the best of its ability in a in a specific video so you can refer to it in the future when the operation comes and how you can use it too and we're going to showcase how you are able to get 30,000 xp in just one singular game which is yeah, I mean, unheard of for any World of Tanks version. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a brilliant time to be playing. And also, we are getting some sales regarding premium tanks as well. So there are a ton of premium tanks on sale. We've got the Tiger 131 and the T-3488, which is actually a very good sale. It's the impactful duo, and both of these tanks are ridiculously overpowered uh, for the tier that they're in, a tier 7 and tier 6 respectively with the Tiger 131 and the T-3488. Uh, probably my favourite is... Uh, it's a difficult one to call. They're both fantastic. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you haven't got them, they're going to be super cheap bundle for what it is and how much enjoyment you'll get. So it might be worth it, and you don't see me saying that a whole lot when it comes to Wargaming's bundles and World of Tanks consoles. So... Either way, you do whatever you want with your money. I'm not going to tell you where you should be spending your money. You're a much better allocator of that. But if you are going to spend money on the game, this wouldn't be a bad bundle. Either way, we then got guns and missiles, which is the WZ-122 and the MBT-70. Both of these tanks, kind of meh. They're not really overpowered in Cold War. They're not really, you know... <laughs> super super good the wz122 is more of my favorite out of the two the mbt70 is kind of lackluster uh, in my opinion but either way two vehicles in cold war if you're interested and you haven't got them you might want to get but then we have the hound and the wolf you've got the holland hund and the lycan t71 both of these tanks probably showing their age within world of tanks so they're nowhere near as good as they used to be the lycan used to be very very powerful as a tier 7 light tank but now probably not so much and the holland hund not really a light tank more of a medium light tank hybrid it's huge it, uh, it's not really a traditional light tank, but if you enjoy a really fast medium, then this would probably be something you could uh, kind of delve into if you're trying to learn light tanks and it wouldn't be the worst one that you could possibly do. And then, of course, there is the objective rushes, which is the T-62M1 and the T-72M1, which is a Cold War vehicle. So I don't believe that they've sold the T-72M1 in a long time. So, yeah, I mean, you could purchase that but it will be expensive because they are cold war vehicles and they are uh, some of the higher end cold war vehicles not just era one but 
Then we have the Tanks for Free XP. So this is an event that Wargaming run quite frequently, to be honest. Um, and essentially, instead of paying for tanks with gold, if you've got free XP lying around on your account like I do, you can get premium tanks for that. But if you are trying to save up your free XP, I would highly recommend just using it on actual uh, getting certain vehicles than using it to get tanks for free XP. It just it isn't really worth your time. Um, but you, in addition to this, you're getting uh, increased silver conversion bonus. So if you're wanting to buy silver in the game, which I wouldn't really recommend, but it is potentially an option. Uh, or there is the free XP conversion, which is more of a useful thing for those of you wanting to pay your way through some of the tech tree lines if you've gathered up the XP on your account in the first place. And that's a good way of doing it. Uh, 1 to 35 is basically the maximum Wargaming will offer you. But either way, you know, that's down to you. There's also Galactic Warlords. As you saw a sneak peek of these last week, they'll be available in the store from Tuesday. And Tankfest. Uh, you may have already seen the news, but we, what MA, will be at Tankfest, hosted uh, by the Tank Museum at Bobbington. And save the date, it's Friday the 23rd of June, uh, that we have an extra special live stream that will be at Tankfest. This is Wargaming, by the way. And uh, we'll be able to share more with you in the coming weeks. But we know this, we're very excited to be part of Tankfest uh, with our PC and Blitz counterparts. And I will also be going to Tankfest on the Saturday. So you may see me if you're going, but yeah, <laughs> maybe. Uh, either way, uh, yeah, Tankfest, really good. Uh, I think it'll be a good crack. It'll be the first time that I've gone. And so, yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Either way, uh, then there was a ton of battle feats so you guys can pause here. I'm not going to go through them all. There's tons of them and they are basically how much XP people have done with the new premium tanks, etc. So yeah. Um, other than that, there were also some Q&A questions that are always interesting. And then we'll get on to the golden week uh, with Wargaming, which is actually kind of something interesting. And you have to stay tuned during the week uh, to find out a little bit more. Uh, and hopefully that'll be uh, something you guys are interested in getting involved with. But could the gravity in Cold War be put to normal like in World War II? It takes a lot of fun out of the game. So they had to increase the gravity in Cold War due to tank speeds. Uh, we initially used the same values, but it caused a lot of tanks to roll over and crash. So we needed to increase the gravity to keep the tanks more stable. Uh, yeah, I mean... That is what it is. Um, when's the real Object 279 coming to Cold War? It's not currently in our tank plan, so they're not going to be bringing that one in. Is there a chance to uh, that one of the Warhammer tanks will be a double barrel? And currently, we don't have the support in our tool set, to, so the answer is no. Uh, and this is exactly what I thought it would be. I don't think double barrel tanks are actually even close to coming to the game. I genuinely, I've not seen any official confirmation. It's pure speculation, but I say this every time when it comes to the double barrel tanks. I just don't think it's easy to implement them on console, which is why we haven't seen them. And they've been released on PC for a ton of time. And we've seen new tanks that have come to PC way a, 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 like ahead of the development that the double barreled tanks were. Uh, so yeah, I just don't think that it's ever going to come to console, at least in the near future. But maybe I'm wrong and hopefully I'm wrong because it would be interesting to see them in the game. So, uh, can Wargaming look at the fall and ram damage for the Weasel as it doesn't make sense when it takes, uh, when it gets rammed, it takes little damage. So this is actually one of the most disgusting things I think that I hate about the Weasel is that you could be in a, in a Goliath of a tank. I am talking FV4211 being pushed by some of the fastest tanks in the game ramming a weasel which is basically a voxel corsa or an opal corsa or whatever it is in your country a ford fiesta you know it is just basically a car at this point with a giant missile attached to it and apparently if it gets rammed by a tank there's 200 damage done to it now you take a mbt 70 and you ram into a fe4211 and you lose more health how does a tank ram into a car essentially and deal less damage than when it rams into a tank. Wargaming this is the most ridiculous thing I think that w was part of the weasel and what makes it even worse is that you could be ramming this thing into oblivion and it just rolls off next to you, plows 1400 damage into you and then scurries off and you're never able to even hit it. But yeah, I guess, I guess it's balanced. 
And what so what do they say? It's so light that it kind of gets pushed rather than creating a large collision when rammed. This happens to other light tanks too, but it's less noticeable. Yeah, I always see AMX 13105s getting rammed by IS-7s and taking 100 damage. Yeah, I see that all of the time. Say, same with if, you know, you're ramming a Panzer 54 into heavy tanks and they're pretty light and you're able to deal, you know, full health at tier 5 to tier 6 vehicles. I mean, yeah, it would make sense that a tank that weighs 150 tons ramming into something that weighs like 3 is apparently going to deal less damage than when you're ramming a Panther into a KV-2 or a T1 Heavy and doing full health to it in a Panzer 54. I think Wargamer got this spot on. I don't think that there's any issues here, and there is definitely nothing wrong with the weasel. Um, <laughs> I'll follow up with the tank designers to see if there's any weighting change we want to apply. I mean, just make the damn thing get rammed for full health. I mean, if this thing is as fast as it is, it's as tiny as it is, and the fact that, you know, if you can manage to actually pin it down and ram it, you should be able to get rewarded for it. Right now, there is no benefit to you actually ramming in it, and it actually makes it even worse if you do try and ram it, because often it then just currently just swivels around your gun, and you don't get the gun arc to be able to find it and pinpoint it anywhere near as easily, so it's actually less of, a, of, a, uh, of an advantage to actually ram it. Wargaming, the weasel, I mean, come on. Come on, it's so light. This happens to other light tanks. I mean, come on. No, it doesn't. I can guarantee you any other heavy that rams into a light tank is going to be dealing at least half their hit points. And even if they have don't have any of the ramming speed perks, I mean, yeah, this is just... Uh, it's just not right, and it should definitely uh, not be able to be pushed for what it is. I'm sorry that that took so long. But it is just an... <laughs> uh, I mean, if you've played Cold War and you've seen the Weasel, it's just a joke. But either way, they're saying that they'll talk to the tank designer. We all know it's a premium tank. Wargaming never going to do anything to it. And so, yeah, at least they can avoid making this mistake ever again because it's just completely ridiculous that that's even a thing. Like, genuinely. I mean, a train crashing into a car... The car doesn't just bounce off. It's completely obliterated into smithereens. Like, hello? Apparently physics don't always make sense. Uh, anyway, with the addition of multiple gun options on the Centuro, maybe we could get one for the Progetto or Rhino. There's definitely a chance and it's something they can think about, but no current plans. Uh, yeah, would be kind of cool. Can you stop bots from capping? We are aware this happens and it's not ideal, but if they go a certain route and find no enemies, then they will go for the base. This is something we can bring to the attentions of our AI engineer. It would be super cool if, for example, it gave you the option to, if you're the remaining teammates on your team decide, you know what, should the bot cap, yes or no? I mean, it's never going to come in, they're never going to do it, but it, it would be cool to have it in the game as an option for the remaining teammates on your team and your team or your bot teammate is actually capping and you could go, no, I don't want the bot to cap. Uh, and then it would like, you know, make its decision to move onwards instead. Um, but once again, it's never going to happen. Wargaming aren't going to do that. Um, is there any uh, an end of season bonus? Um, so yes, there's a 25% silver bonus at level 124, which is good. Uh, could you reforge the Makava Mark III? It's currently at 51% win rate and blocks the most damage of all Era 3 tanks, so it's looking quite healthy. I don't think it's that bad. Um, any updates on the wheeled vehicle's development? Unfortunately, it's still in development, so there's no updates. Uh, any updates on moving the uh, FV4005 to Era 2? So there's no plans to change this vehicle as Era at any time, uh, or at least at this current time is what they said. Um, but it could probably deal with a little bit of a nerf from what I've seen of everyone uh, in this era. When will the German T-55A be available? Uh, so no dates as of this time, but it's uh, just like the other premium tanks removed from the tech tree, they will only be available in special sale events, which is what Wargaming is doing, because of course I think that they were finding that they were just selling uh, or not making the hype, which didn't sell as many vehicles, because it becomes much more of a, oh, I need to buy this premium tank because it's in the bundle. Uh, because it's a limited time. It's the theory of things get more expensive 
when you actually limit how many of them there are in like the game or in a business, it's how fashion brands like, you know, uh, Gucci and Louis Vuitton managed to have a price of a, I don't know, a handbag at like £30,000. It's because they make them so, uh, the amount of them is so little that there's actually far less uh, kind of availability, which means that there actually drives more demand than there would be if it was just widely and mass produced because of the rarity and people generally psychologically want the rare things so they'll go out and buy them which is probably what wargaming are trying to do here making you think oh this is a rare tank so i should go out and buy it now rather than oh it's always on sale i may go out and buy it at some point if i really feel like it um so yeah that's that's what they're doing and hopefully you uh, you can use that knowledge that I've just told you there uh, to make your decision as to whether or not you want to buy it. Half the time, a lot of the premium tanks aren't worth it, unless, of course, they are on sale. But yeah, it's up to you. And of course, don't go buying a bundle that has like two terrible tanks in it just to get one good one because you're paying all of that money and you'll get two tanks that you're never going to use. Uh, so just be mindful of the bundles that Wargaming offer. Uh, can you buff the French wheeled light tanks? Uh, we've have some of the stats here and they are doing pretty well. EBR 105, 52% win rate. EBR 90, 50%. Lynx, uh, 48%. Hotchkiss, 49%. Uh, so potentially the Lynx might need looking at um, and I can pass this on to the team. To be honest with you, I just think it's the controller uh, ability to actually move these French wheeled light tanks that makes it just not particularly that great. Um, so I don't think it's necessarily the tanks being bad. I think it's more of a case of on a controller, the wheel vehicles, they're just nowhere near as intuitive and therefore they just aren't as good. I don't think it's necessarily the tank itself that is like unbalanced or bad. So that's just my opinion. And then can we get more military emblems like the red hat on the Cromwell B? We may be adding more military emblems next season. So yeah, uh, could you have a look at TOG 2? We can certainly take a look and see if it warrants buffs. I mean, it's the TOG 2. You don't buff the TOG 2 other than make it 50 kilometers an hour. Could you imagine that? Um, <laughs> since uh, Forad can use a coaxial machine gun, will other tanks be able to use it in the future? So they don't plan to give more usage of machine guns, but is there a certain tank that you would like to see a secondary weapon applied to? Let them know. So, I mean, if you want to, then you can let them know on the live stream or go through the official channels on Discord, etc. Uh, and let people know and they'll pass it on. Any hint on where the Italian TD lines will begin? It will branch off of the tier 4 P2640. Uh, so it's actually tier 4. I thought it was tier 6, but obviously you can look in the tech tree. I think it leads on to the Bisotto, which is the tier 5, which is actually pretty broken on PC. Um, so yeah, I mean, I already knew that. I just was being an idiot. Um, but either way, can we get a funny emblem that says you mad, bro? We suggested it to the team and see what happens. Um, yeah, that'd be cool. Are respawn mechanics being considered for any new game modes? There will be some other interesting ideas coming in event modes in the near future. So stay confirmed. This is actually really cool. I would love to see more event modes where, you know, they reduce gravity, they increase hit points by double, uh, they increase damage by double, uh, you know, just special limited event modes that are kind of cool, novel, you know, all they are is literally the game, but they have an event mode. And maybe even if you didn't earn any money or like if, if you were only playing the mode to get like an emblem or like a cosmetic or maybe if it, even if it was like you play that and then you get rewarded with like a tank at the end of it that everyone can participate in and it's just a case of you know you have to play that game mode or something like that that was kind of cool i think that would be super super cool and i think adding in event modes would be something that would be very beneficial but of course yeah let me know what you guys think and of course whether you think that would be beneficial use of the developer time since it's only just me and my opinion and my opinion means absolutely no more than your guys's so yeah let me know other than that, of course, they just highlighted what the content changes were. But let's go into the golden week. And this is the final thing in today's video. And the golden week is uh, with a lucky wheel. So, yes, essentially it is a lucky wheel is a virtual prize wheel that we created especially for golden week. So for every golden ticket or silver ticket you have, you'll get a chance to spin the wheel and win an incredible 
in-game prize. So you can access the Lucky Wheel on the official Golden Week website. The website I will link in the comment section of this video. You can have a look um, and it will just be this link right here. Uh, so you can click on it, comes here, launches. It will tell you when it actually launches and you can go into it. But if we go backwards just a second, how long will the Golden Week ev event last? So it will last for uh, uh, until the 5th of May. So I believe you've got two weeks um, or two weeks there or thereabouts, 10 days or something. Um, and on May 6th, you'll still be able to claim your tickets after the event's closed for uh, essentially 48 hours uh, after it closes. And uh, yeah, essentially you get that. And then what types of tickets? So you get silver tickets. So these are like the smaller prizes and golden tickets award larger prizes given out uh, for bigger events like in-game challenges or golden week holidays. So yeah, this is cool. And then how do you get tickets? So by logging in to the Lucky Wheel website during the golden event week, every day you log in, you'll receive one ticket. Most days will grant you a silver, but on the four occasions, official golden week holidays you'll receive a golden ticket and each new day starts at uh like zero midnight a utc so yeah and the golden week holidays are show a day uh on april 29th i might have absolutely butchered that in fact i probably have uh, i apologize to anyone uh that, that may take into uh, <laughs> or may get offended by that apologies um but constitution memorial day so on may 3rd greenery day on may 4th and children's day on may 5th so you'll be able uh, to get a golden ticket on each of those days so make sure that you log on to the website and pick it up and you can get uh, a golden a ticket by completing one or both of the available golden week challenges so you can get golden week daily wins each day you can earn a golden ticket by winning 10 multiplayer battles in either world war ii or cold war your ticket will be available to redeem on the website after the following day's data sync so it takes like a day to update so every single day that you're getting 10 battles uh, on the game then yeah or winning 10 battles on the game then you'll be able to get a golden ticket and there'll also be quests, so uh, golden quest, uh, golden week quest number one to four. For each stage, you'll get uh, essentially you'll need to play 25 battles and earn at least 100 XP in each one. So you can't just join into random battles and leave. Uh, and you'll get a reward for completing each stage. Um, and after after stage four, you'll get a golden ticket among your rewards, and you'll also receive an onboarding golden ticket after your first successful battle in the first time you attempt this challenge. This chained challenge can be completed a total of three times. You can go through it three times in a row to get three golden tickets. And by participating in competitions on our official social media channels, you'll be able to earn promo codes that you can enter on the Golden Week Lucky Wheel to claim your golden or silver ticket. So super, super good as well. Um, and yeah, it, it's looking really, really nice. And just remember that it does take a day to update when you are playing your games and completing your challenges before the ticket gets added onto the website since it has to sync, etc. So just wait uh, until the next day and then it should be there. And then do your tickets expire? Yes, all tickets will expire and be unusable after 48 hours from the time they become available on the website. So within two days, you have to claim your tickets and use them uh, and therefore you'll get the, your rewards. Now, the rewards haven't actually been given yet, so we don't know what they are. I would assume by what we've got here, the premium tank here, the uh, STA-2, or at least the Senshi STA-2, is part of the tank wheel. So I'm assuming you may be able to get some premium tanks out of this, or at least the Senshi STA-2 premium tank, uh, which is the tier 8 uh, Japanese medium tank that's actually pretty good. And I'll be doing a video on it recently, so you guys uh, can actually look at that uh, in the next coming few days. And then how do you claim it? All you do is you go on and then you spin your wheel and you'll be able to get your reward. So just stay tuned, make sure that you're logging on and especially during the golden week holidays that we've outlined. And yeah, hopefully everything will be sorted for you guys and just keep an eye on all of the social media channels uh, and just make sure that, yeah, you're sticking around and you may be able to get some extra 
uh, tickets that you may be able to get silver. I'm expecting you getting XP boost, all of those sorts of stuff. It will all be part of the tank wheel. So just make sure that you're using it every day. It should be a simple like two minute job. You literally just load it up on the page and it will log it straight in. You just have to log into your Xbox or PlayStation account on the official website. Remember, and then for you'll be able to use the golden wheel and it should just go straight to your account. Other than that, that is literally it. I'll be interested to see what you think of the tank wheel, what you think of the uh, XP with interest operation. And yeah, let me know what you think of the week's news. Hopefully you did enjoy. And of course, we are reaching nearly 15,000 subscribers. So if you can do me a massive favor and you aren't already subscribed, then please do click that subscribe button. Otherwise, if you are subscribed, then please do hit the like button as it massively helps out. But if you don't do anything else, then yeah, your viewership is more than uh, appreciated by myself. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and I hope you join me in the next video coming tomorrow. Goodbye.